Hello guys and welcome back to my Fate Grand Order Lost Bell 6 gameplay. So yeah, let us continue our journey. Now we are here in Norwich. And uh, yeah, I think we have to fight Barkist here. Not really sure if this is a stalling battle or whatever. So let's see. And I feel like it's actually time that we like actually fight like a proper boss. Like we haven't really fought a proper boss up until now. So yeah, I think this is about time. Let's see. I have a report from Captain Landon, sir. They've taken full control of the South District. A report from Captain Aura Lea, sir, as well. The Queen's soldiers near the main gate have retreated after losing 20% of their force. Okay. <clears throat> Great work. Now go to do the same for the North District. We're going ahead to the Vault Castle. Take anyone who surrenders into custody and have Aurelia's squad look after them. Yes sir, understood. So, hmm. Uh, you know, this is a lot harder than I thought it would be. Gareth, have a shot. You two stay here. Muramasa, Artoria, Da Vinci, Fujimaru. The five of us will infiltrate the vault castle. I trust that's okay with you. Okay, just try and stop me. Been waiting to smack the smug out of Spriggan for a while now. <laughs> you said it, we're nearly there. My mind, still so fiery, I see. Now I really gl I'm really glad I went through the trouble of securing that route in for you. None of the Queen's soldiers are stationed in their vault castle. Once you get past Friggan's guard, then... Wait a sec. The front door is... Open? I'm not sensing any soldiers in there either. It looks like the path to the bell tower is all clear. It's a trap. Hmm... You think it's a trap? Yeah, like... I don't know. Probably yes, but not for us. Oh. So, for who? The Queen? This trap is only for Artoria, the child of prophecy and Queen Morgan. Ah, uh, okay, so yeah, I see. Spriggan really is a sly old fox, isn't he? He's just handling the bell over to us. Handling the... okay. Makes sense though, he gains nothing by trying to protect it at this point. He must be trying to surrender without defying the Queen. He wants to be able to deny any involvement in ringing the bell. Yep. Well, this is a surprise. I thought we'd never be able to take control of Norwich without ringing the bell. But if Spriggan has pulled his soldiers back, he must not have any intention of fighting. That means our battle to occupy Norwich is over. We no longer have to ring the bell to win. That said, yeah, I think whether we go ring it now or not is up to Child of Prophecy. Yeah, like once we ring in the bell, will we officially declaring war? So we can do that later or now. I guess that's what they're saying. And she does, it will be declaration of war, there'll be no going back. I hate to play into Spriggan's hands, but I doubt we'll get another opportunity like this. Yeah. Let's go, bell or no bell, Spriggan is still inside. Between him just letting the calamity happen and the stunt he's trying to pull right now, I just can't let him go. I want to know exactly what the head of the Earth Clan was thinking when he made those decisions. Alright. Ah, we didn't run into a single soldier on the way up here, let alone Spriggan himself. So, he wasn't here at all? Okay, like, I guess, not in the bell tower. I've got a hell of a bad feeling about this. Jill's even. Be careful, there's something here. Yeah, it's weird how the... Like, what was the point of... There is definitely a trap. Oh my god. Capless, Capless, where are you, Capless? I smell paradise, I hear Avalon. I see, so you've finally come. There are magical energies collecting on one, on the ceiling. This is... This destin, density is the night call. The one who saves us shall be Britain's undoing. Ah, curse my dead body. I will gladly give my soul for the Earth Clan. In exchange for your abominable body. Oh, so it wasn't Gawain. Okay, never mind. I thought we'd have to fight Gawain or something. Alright. Okay, let's just take care of this then. Uh. Okay, so... Yeah, let's just go with this. Wait, did I... 
Oh my god, I... Wait, what the hell? Didn't I choose... Oh, that was my mistake. Why is there no Castoria with... A okay, there it is. Yeah, I think this is enough. I don't think I need anyone here. Let's just go with this. Wait, the name Capitalist, I feel like I've heard that somewhere. I think this lost belt in itself. Alright. ルメ、ハブが戦いであれば、白兵隊、行きます。熱を帯びなく、丸みアドワーズ、クラキミスーミオ。あとは仕掛けないぞ。実質、神戸を垂れよ、恐怖は希望の波、南北、通りに当たわ
like I'm pretty sure he's going to bring up a proposition like oh why don't we work together you know like because he said something like that in the previous video I remember in the end he was like oh are they like you know worthy of my investment or something like that he said all right Brigan oh why are you glaring at me like that the battle is over your round table army has defeated the Queen's soldiers Norwich is now free of the Queen's oppressive regime and it's all thanks to you. I, Norwich's own lord, couldn't be even happier about this turn of events. What do you say? Shall we toast to your victory? Oh my god. Ah, but where are my manners? Apologies for my lack of consideration. If you wish to leave, by all means go right ahead. My soldiers will gladly clear the way for you. Now what? Yo, we... we what are you on about? Why would we leave? In no way. We were told that you were the one who called the Queen's army here in the first place, yeah. How can you do that and still claim to be innocent? Yes, I did make a report to Her Majesty. The calamity caused a great deal of damage, so I requested she send soldiers to help with the restoration efforts. Any responsible lord would have done the same. Unfortunately, it seems there were some bad apples among the Queen's soldiers who thought to treat our more rebellious citizens quite brutally. Ah, but once again, your timely intervention prevented any of my citizens from coming to harm. For that, I owe you my thanks. So that's what you're going with. The Royal Army's attempted purge of any hint of rebellion had nothing to do with you. Huh? It's actually very, I guess you could say, very clever. Well, like what he's doing is like he's playing both. <laughs> he's playing both the sides. Like he's calling the queen so that if somehow, like, you know, the queen realizes that, you know, like, uh, we were there and uh, he didn't like you know, can, like inform them then his head will be rolling you know like so he's like he told the queen because of that so that he can be safe in that regards and then <laughs> now to us he's like oh we are just like you know we called them for some aid because of the calamity and uh, yeah you like and they were kind of uh, like you know acting bad with my citizens and uh, yeah you guys helped me out so thanks for that and he's trying to play us as well because like he's trying to play both sides and trying to think like like a make a good um i guess you could say impression for both sides because if you think about it kaldia and the queen are actually enemies but he's trying to actually be friends with both which is kind of a bold move you know <laughs> because he cannot really side with one because automatically the other will get him so he's like trying to make friends with both in a weird way. <laughs> I don't know man, this is... okay. Okay, that's fine. At this point, there's no way we can prove it anywhere or the other. Yeah, exactly. But what's your game plan now? <laughs> yeah, now what? Now you'll play buddy buddy with us and then as soon as we leave, you're going to... You're going to snitch to the queen? <laughs> oh god, Norwich has fallen and your citizens are sick of... <laughs> <laughs> Do you really have time to be hanging out here chatting with us? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Leonardo da Vinci. I must say, for such a great mind as yours, that was simply uncalled for. True, Norwich may have fallen, but that is temporary situation at worst. Since the child of prophets is leading the round table army, you must only be here for this well. I very much doubt that you occupied Norwich with the intention of keeping it for yourself. Yeah, that is true. However, yeah, I don't think the citizens will actually... Your citizen will actually be happy if you resume your rule over here. Well, I suppose you may be considering using it for the Roundtable Army's base of operations. But as you've just ably proven, Norwich is quite vulnerable to invasion. Of course, if you want it to end up raised to the ground for treason like Sheffield, far be from me to far be it from me to stop you. Why you little now, now, don't bother. No sense letting this one work you up. And trying to hold him accountable for his crimes would only be even bigger waste of a time. He doesn't believe he's done anything wrong in any case. <laughs> wow. Oberon, when did you get here? Yes, now. Luckily, my trick with the rest restaurant worked like a charm. I'm glad to see you all worked, wrapped things up here nice and neat. I knew you could do it, Percival. But you've done a pretty poor job with the aftermath. If you were going to kill Spriggan, it should have been during the chaos of battle. Now it's too late. Well, he never really appeared at that moment. Now he's appearing after everything has ended, so... 
It would have been one thing if you wanted to get rid of Norwich, but you'd never do that, would you? What? Get rid of Norwich? Oh, do you need me to explain it for you, foreign mate? What? Don't bother, I'll sum it up. Riggins demonstrated his neutrality to his citizens, thereby fulfilling his role as is their lord. As a result, the fairies of Norwich still recognize him as their leader. So they definitely won't be happy if you kill him now that he's shown he's open to peaceful discussion. Oh, wait. Riggins demonstrated neutrality to his citizens. Oh, I see. So that's why he said like it would be one thing if you wanted to get rid of Norwich. Because unless and until we do that, the citizens won't really be happy if we kill Brigham. Like, there's two things we can do. Not two, I guess. No, two. One is we either could have killed Spriggan in the like you know, like in the battle and say like, oh, he, he died, and the citizens won't be able to say anything. Now that he is fine, still, if we kill him now, the citizens won't be happy. And uh, if you still want to kill him, we have to kill him at the same time, completely wipe out Norwich. Unless and until people will have, won't be happy with this, this way of, you know, like, if this happens. Okay. And that's not all. While Norwich's artisans may all hate Spriggan, the other residents who used artisan services consider him indispensable. Remember how I said that Norwich is on the verge of becoming a human city? Spriggan's policies are essential for fairies who want to maximize their profits above wealth. I see. That's what makes him so tricky to deal with. Sure, half of Norwich hates him, but the other half supports him. So, you can't just kill him without a very good reason. It would make us public enemies. And not only that, without Spriggan to negotiate with the Queen, she would declare it a rebel stronghold and just take it over herself. Yeah, that is true. Oh boy. Oh great. Politics, you know. And now we can protect this city, letting, and since we can protect this city, letting that happen would essentially destroy Norwich. There you have it. To kill a ruler is to effectively kill their nation as well. If what you want is to destroy Norwich, then by all means, go ahead and execute me. You're not bluffing, are you? You do really mean that. You don't care about the safety of Earth Clan, and you have no wish to keep Norwich safe. But you also apparently don't care if you live or die. I don't get it. Your actions seem so purposeless and incomprehensible. It's almost as if you're... Yeah, like, he's just doing it for the fun. That's right. Human. Oh, what the hell? You're no fairy, Spriggan. Really? You're what they call a changeling. Someone who drifted here from proper human history, aren't you? Okay, that, I was not expecting that. Change the group. Wait, so what? No, I did not have any feeling of that, so I'm not going to choose that. <laughs> A human clan head, but that's impossible. There's no way he could keep an act for yeah that for so long. Like if he's human, how the hell can he still be? I don't know. Like what? Fairies distinguish between other fairies and humans by scent, magical energy, and appearance. No one fairy is exactly like any other, so as long as someone could meet the right criteria, they could definitely pass as a human looking fairy. For scent, they just need to make a cologne that approximates how fairies smell. Okay. The comparative lack of magical energy they have could be distinguished with a mystic code. And as for their appearance, hey, yeah, his ears kind of look like fairy ears, but aside from that, humans can have their extremities surgically modified without any negative side effects. So. That's no big surprise. What I want to know is how you solved the aging problem. Yeah, exactly. You've been Norwich's lot for a hundred years now and makeup can only do so much to make you look younger. I'm afraid to ask what you look like under all that. <laughs> I don't have a slightest idea what you're talking about. However, let's say, just for the sake of argument, that I came from the same world as Lord Fujimaru here. If I did, surely you could imagine something I might want. Oh, I have no attachment to Britain, the fairies, or the queen, nor can I go back to my old home at this point. Indeed, I can never go back to being John Smith, the human, if I, if I want to be John Smith. That's a, okay, that's a very... 
No, all I care about is this vault castle, right? That's not exactly right, but you're not far off either. Personally, I don't care who sits on the throne. Queen, Child of Prophecy, whoever, it's all the same to me. All I care about is keeping this vault castle safe. My role as the Lord of Norwich is only a means to that end. Okay, but why the vault castle? One of the tricks to survival is serving someone stronger than you. I guess, right now that means working for the Queen. But depending on what you do next, that could easily change. You see, he's the most annoying kind of person to deal with. He's neither friend nor foe. But never mind him, Norwich never had much in the way of a military. Once we ring the bell, we won't need to come here back again. Rickens prim prim pri private soldiers are just that, private soldiers. I can't imagine they'll ever be a threat to the round table army. Right you are. Now you understand what makes me tick? If you think I'm not worth killing, then that's fine with me. Very well then, this jester will just go ahead and remove himself to the corner. If you wish to ring the bell of pilgrimage, please be my guest. Still, I will say that jester or not, I do have hopes and dreams of my own. Wait a minute, he didn't answer the question. Did he? Aging problem, how? He says, I don't have the slightest idea what you're talking about, however. And he just completely changes the subject. I have no idea. Like, you know what? Let me check something. What is a changeling? Like, I've heard that term a lot, but... Changeling, uh, in European folklore, a deformed or imbecilic offspring of fairies or elves, substituted by their surreptitiously, what? Substituted by them surreptitiously for a human infant. According to legend, they abducted human children and given to the devil or used to strengthen fairy stuff. Okay, wait a minute. I need a better explanation. Okay. Uh, European folklore deformed or imbecilic offspring of fairies or elves substituted by them surreptitiously for a human infant. According to legend, the abducted human children are given to the devil or used to strengthen fairy stock. The, the return of the original child may be affected by making the changing laugh or by torturing it. This later belief was responsible for various cases of actual child abuse. What? Existence of changes is believed to, believe to stem from the idea that infants are susceptible to demonic possession. I have no idea what, what the hell is... What? Deformed or imbecilic offspring of fairies or elves substituted by them surreptitiously for a human infant. Okay, I... Why... Why is... What... Okay, I I really don't understand. <laughs> the, the language is too diff. What is sir? okay? Wait a minute. Let me see something. Um, what is okay? Oh, here we go. A child believed to have been secretly substituted by fairies for the parents' real child. Oh. Ah. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. But then, what does that have to do with Spriggan? I can't... Uh... Changing for fairies who had been left in place of a human child or baby who had been stolen away by fairies. The child was taken for one of the three reasons, to act as a servant, for the fairies to receive the love of a human child, or for malice or revenge, I see. I doubt I have much longer to live, so I hope I'll get to see the child of prophecy defeat the queen before my time is up. Alright. Okay, wait. Like, 
I understand the whole makeup thing. Like Da Vinci herself says, like I don't know what makeup you're using, but I don't understand one thing still. Even if he's using a makeup, didn't Da Vinci say like he's like lived for like a hundred years or more? Normal humans don't live that long. So, is it because he's a changeling that he can live maybe a little bit longer than ordinary humans? Like normal lifespan, human lifespan is like 80, 85, 90 maximum. And very rare that people go towards 100 or more than 100. So, yeah. Okay, anyways, enough about Spriggan. Okay, now that that's settled, let's get to the main event. Are you ready to do this, Artoria? Tazbury, Gloucester, Norwich, and Lund Londinium. Tazbury, the city of wind, where fairies and uh, humans and fairies coexist. Gloucester, the city of flowers. That glitters bright but hollow. Norwich, the city of smiths, where all kinds of fairies and humans compete, swindle, and help each other. And Londonium, the city of ruins, where everyone smiles and cares for despite others, despite all the pain and loss they have suffered. Sixteen years, the time I spent as the child of prophecy in Tentacle. Artoria? Okay, I'm going to ring the bell. Don't worry, I already know how. Stand back, everyone. Okay. Oh. Song of Paradise, Voice of the Inner Sea. You who were born to be selected to decide the fate of this land and to see justice done, the bells of the bones of Inception Sands shall show you the way. Forgive us these sins. Ooh, here we go. Ah, we have officially declared war. Imagine just Lancelot just dropping in immediately <laughs> from the sky. <laughs> Is it noon already? Seems a bit early for that. Maybe it's not the usual cathedral bell. I wonder what it is then. It sounds really happy and sad at the same time. Hmm. My chest feels tight. What a nostalgic sound. Is that a bell of pilgrimage, Lady Aurora? Yes, it is. It must be Norwich's bell, meaning the Earth Clan has accepted her. <laughs> it looks like your plan worked, Oberon, though I do feel a little bad about tricking Woodwoods. Oh, yeah, she did kind of. Congratulations, Artoria. Thank you, Fujimaru. Now at long last we can finally take the next steps forward. Okay. Oh, the mom was here. What can I ask her? The sound, it feels like it's ringing out all across Britain. And this frequency, it doesn't sound like joy so much as... Aha, now I see. So that's what they mean by pilgrimage. There's the first one. What a relief, it's about time she did something worthy of the child of prophecy. I was more than a little worried when she accepted the Queen's invitation to Camelot. But now, <laughs> the war has will finally begin. I can't wait, can you, Queen Asuka? Wow, these two are just so... <laughs> so, so much, you know, like, similar to each other. Her Majesty, the Queen versus the Child of Prophecy, the Tamlin versus the Round King uh, Table Army. I wonder who's gonna drop out first, I wonder who will have the last laugh. Who will you bet on, Koyaska? Oh, maybe you put your money on Kaldia, the real dark horse? Kaldia can't possibly win. They're not even a player in this game. But having said that, in your case, betting on Kaldia may not be such a bad idea. Very Britain's market value is about to tank after all. <laughs> so if you know what's coming, maybe you should consider a different possibility? Don't be ridiculous, there's no way I'm getting out of this game after all the trouble. I went to set up the pieces. Oh yes, just you wait, Koyaska. I'm going to make things right, no matter what happens. Lady Murian? Okay. Oh, Rocknaria. Huh, so that's what the Bell of Pilgrimage sounds like. It doesn't do much for my soul. Well, it's good Norwich is out of the picture. About time she finally got serious. Anyone worthy of my rival should not have no trouble at all ringing a bell or two.
And here we go, everyone's in panic. What an ominous sound. Is that one of the bells of pilgrimage? What happened to the soldiers we sent to Norwich? What is Lord Spriggan saying about this? It's a child of prophecy. She, she banded allied with the Round Table Army and invaded Norwich. What was Wood was doing? How could he let the Round Table Army make a move while he was in Oxford? Berlgut was right. We should have captured and killed her when we had the chance. You, you're actually talking against the Queen. Wow, these people, they have... <laughs> They have quite the... Order, order. 30 ambassadors, 100 officials. Close your mouths. High Queen Morgan is about to speak. Hear her words and obey. A bell of pilgrimage has rung. Send word to every lord and fairy on the land. The child of prophecy is no longer my subject. I name her an enemy of the state. And who offer all who offer her aid and of any sort shall be branded the same. Fairy Britain abides no enemy. It crushes them without mercy. I command Woodwoods, Lord of Oxford, to begin an attack on Londinium. Okay, great. I shall weigh his success in this battle against his transgression in permitting the advance on Norwich when determining his punishment. There's no place for the child of prophecy in my fairy Britain. Oh, the High Prince made her decision. That accursed child of prophecy is as good as dead now. War, there's going to be a war. Oh, I can't wait. This is going to be so much fun. Oh, wow. Yeah, because you guys will be just sitting down here, twiddling your thumbs, doing nothing, while everyone else sacrifices their lives, dying for you, while you just sit and, I don't know, like, revel in the glory. <laughs> yeah, obviously, you, you'll be very excited about this, because you're in, in no part in this war. I've been bored out of my mind these last hundred years. Now we'll get to hear the lower class fairies writhing in agony again. Oh my god. Thank you, Child of Prophecy. Thank you, Round Table Army. Thank you for share, starting a bloodbath. Yeah, these people actually need to. <laughs> hmm. No sooner do they see preparations for war being made, they scurry off, off to their homes. Two thousand years and fairies are still just as fickle and bloodthirsty as ever. Fortune, awaken. Knight Fortune. Fortune. What? Oh, this person. Yes, High Queen. Go, uh, High Queen. Guard Knight Fortune at your service. It's, a high, it's an honor to have been freed from the chessboard. Wait. <laughs> Wait, was he like stuck in the chessboard or something as one of the pieces? That'd be kind of funny. <laughs> the 200 years since I last saw you have done nothing to diminish your majesty's beauty. Never mind the formalities. Here, drink this. This water will grant you memories of all that has transpired in the last 200 years. Wow, that's quite convenient. <laughs> Very well then, if I may. Now I understand. The child of prophecy. Hmm. I'm sorry my clan's head's prophecy has become such a headache for you, High Queen. Wait. Wait a minute. My clan's head. Oh, um, Ainsel. Wait, Ainsel was the Mirror Clan. Yeah, Mirror Clan, wasn't it? So he's from the Mirror Clan? No. Yeah, he was from the Mirror Clan. Yeah, I think so. Oh my god, there's so many clans I'm mixing st stuff up. Wait a minute. Uh, Nocturnia is from the King Clan. Um, Murian is from the Wing Clan. And Murian is the only one left from the Wing Clan. Uh, Ainsel is from the Mirror Clan. And Ainsel is currently missing. Okay. Speaking of which, where are my fellow Mirror Clan? Oh, there you go. He just says that. Alright. Fellow Mirror Clan fairies who replaced Ainsel as their head. The Mirror Clan is gone. You are the last of their kind, Fortune. I see. What an ironic twist of fate. I parted way with Ainsel to serve your majesty as a knight, and thanks to that, I'm still alive today. That is surely the optimal future you once saw. Your choice was the correct one, and is why you are still alive today. Now, you will once again make use of your prognostication. You will accompany Tamlin Gawain and Tamlin Lancelot as their advisor. And if by any chance, worst should come to worst, I trust you know what to do. Yes, High Queen. We guard knights are fully aware of your wishes. You will like the time, Lynn, to go to Oxford to assist with an attack on Londin Londinium, right? Have you gone soft in the head? Woodwoods needs no help with Londinium. I have other missions for the Tamlin. 
There is someone else who has been a thorn on my side for too long. The attack on Londinium is merely a sideshow. Not Naria? I'm guessing. Well, that's finally one bell down. Wait. What the hell? She's leveling up! Second ascension! Artoria? Huh? Ah, uh, what's going on? Why am I glowing so much? She must be burning up water. We need water. Uh, no, I think this is just to level up. Da Vinci, can't you whip up some fast-acting coolant or something? What the hell? Grown up me might have been able to, but me? No way. Da what was that? She leveled up. Wow, sorry for panicking there. The prophet never, never said anything about that. Uh, that aside, yeah, I can tell. This is really, yeah, it really is. Not a fairy, but even I can tell. <laughs> but why are you staring at me like that? You're making me nervous. D did I do something wrong? No, you did something very right. Artoria, did you just grace get crazy strong? Hmm? Yeah. All right. Interesting. I up until now just thought that the bells were just like a. You know, just like a like a symbol. The main reason for the prophecy thing to go and ring the bell is the symbolic. What the hell is going on here? What? Fragment. Oh, is this is Marsha's story. Wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Like I was saying, um, up until now, I just thought like the whole uh, bell ringing the bell was just a symbolic way of saying like, oh, you need to go and convince. Or defeat the the leader of that place, but no, turns out it actually like and serves a purpose. You just level up. Like she's probably like I don't know at level, like like you know kind of leveled up some like a little bit, and maybe in, when we ring the other bells as well, maybe she'll ascend to her second ascension and then the third ascension, something like that. All right, is this? Are we going to see Marsh again? It's written fragments, so. And why is the whole of the, the map in fog again? Like, it's written in Norwich, but okay. Yep, it's Marsh. There you go. My body's tingling all over. What happened to... Okay. I hope she didn't lose her memories again. What? What? Oh my god! Yo, that, that person is someone else. That is not Heavy Cat. Oh, this is Heavy Cat, I think. Or wait, no. Wait, 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 wait. She's awake, she's awake. Look. Oh, never mind. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, never mind. No, 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 okay. Oh, wow, everything makes sense now. I just realized so many things in this small little, like, you know, as soon as I saw her face, at first I thought, like, that is someone else, an imposter, but now that I see that she's saying, look, Ash, that weird girl with the weird iron armor finally woke up, I realized one thing, the reason why Happy Cat is so calm, and how she's like, oh, Marsh is fine, you know, she, she'll be back, she's okay, no harm will come to her, because she went through this already, there's a time loop or whatever, I don't know, that's going on. Habi Cat already met Marsh. And that is why she's so, like, I guess you could say so confident that, oh, everything is fine. You know, because she knows that in her past self will meet her now. And like, you know, like this cycle of time or whatever. This is where Habi Cat met Marsh for the first time, I'm guessing. Here in this time. Okay. So this is like a separate dimension or like some kind of a time loop, whatever hell the hell that is. Look, Ash, the weird girl with even weirder iron armor who finally woke up. She's gotta be an evil fairy. Can I kill her? Can I? Habitrot, you're all right. Thank goodness, I was worried that huge lightning bolt may have burned Norwich to the ground. No, Norwich? What the hell is a Norwich? Is that the name of the forest you came from? Okay, where, where is Ash? Are we gonna see her?
Huh, a beach. Where did Norwich go? Where's Senpai and Artoria? What's going on? Habitrot? What happened to Norwich? I don't know any Norwich. I'd quit calling me that. That's not my name. I'm Totorot. Tumbling Totorot. And don't you forget it. Oh, wow. Alright, never mind. Okay, so I still think Habitrot realizes what is happening. And that is why she's so calm about how, oh, Marsh is fine. Marsh is okay. She realizes what is going on. Even though this, I'm guessing this is like her previous reincarnation or something. I don't know, something like that. Or maybe her ancestor, who's the Tamlin, um, you know, the Tamlin that I think they, they talked about. Um, yeah, Ash's party. The Tamlin, Grimmer, uh, the Black Knight. Yeah. Oh, wait, that was, yeah, that was Ash's, yeah, yeah, okay. And also, okay, 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 you know what, let's, let's go. Huh? Totorot? You mean, you aren't Happy Cat? Happy Cat? I don't know what that is, but I love it. That's way better than this Grimalkin's yapping. <laughs> Grimalkin. Ash, Ash, you gotta see this girl. She's amazing. I don't know what she's talking about, but everything she says is amazing. She's gotta be a mage just like you. Now, here's the thing. I'm just making a guess here. I think Ash is Artoria Caster. Because like her previous reincarnation or something like that, maybe her ancestor, whatever it is, I think it's something like that. Because we, we're seeing a pattern here. We're seeing Habitrot's um, ancestor, this Totorot. So I'm guessing like Artoria's or Castoria's ancestor is like Ash, who literally looks like her. I think that's what's going to happen. Our caster is going to come out now. Let's see. I knew it. There you go. Okay, I, I feel like this was a little bit... I, I could easily guess this one because, you know, like, we've been hearing how Ash is such a crazy, like, you know, like, person who has been... who have, has helped everyone in the previous, has done so many things. So, it, it makes sense that, you know, the child of prophecy is actually Ash. And, uh, you know, like... She was there so many years ago, then, you know, like, sh she she came back, I think, like, 2000, you know, 2000 years ago, like, 2000 BC, I'm going to call it. I don't know the exact term they use. And then, like, you know, no, at, at first, it was 4000. I need to go and read the notes again. 4000, then 2000, and then we didn't, don't see Ash anymore. So, and now back here in the present, I guess this is Ash's, um... Like, you know, like, what do you call it? Like, in incarnation, reincarnation, which is the child of prophecy. Come in, Totorot, and please stop calling everything you've seen, you've not seen before Magecraft, will you? Hello there, nice to meet you. I'm Ash, and this is Totorot. Welcome to Britain, the Isle of Fairies. Would you be so kind as to tell your name? It must be fate that brought us together here. <laughs> Would be happy to help you if you like. Thank you, my name is Marsh Kirialite. Ash, are you Ash the Savior? Oh, so you know about me. Are you from London Londinium then? I'm sure I remember seeing a fairy as strong as you though. Hmm, I'm sure I sensed an incredibly powerful spell similar to the Infinity Mirror out here on the East Coast. Wait a minute. Okay, no, never mind. Wait, I was gonna say something else. No, no, I don't think that'll work like that. I was going to say, like, like, Totorot ex told herself that, like, you know, like, introduced herself as a Tamlin. I was also going to say, isn't Marsh also a Tamlin here? So, oh, wait. Is Marsh the Black Knight? That would kind of make sense. I think. I don't know. Okay, you know what? Let me just read. Like, it would kind of make sense. Alright, you know what? One thing will prove if Marsh is the Black Knight. If you actually get to see Black Knight somewhere here, then it'll negate. Like, it, 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 like then, then I'll realize, no, Marsh is not the Black Knight. Because Black Knight already exists here. We, we saw Totrot calling Grimmer, like Grimmer or something like that. I'm pretty sure Grimmer is here somewhere. So, if Grimmer is here, the Tamlin is here, 
and Ash is here, that would only mean that the Black Knight would be the only one, like, you know, remaining. If the Black Knight is here, then it's fine. If he's not here, then I would, I would like to think that Marsh is actually the Black Knight. Oh, are you a Northern Fairy, perhaps? Did you mess up the teleportation and end up here in the middle of nowhere? A Northern Fairy? So she's one of Queen Mab's people, even though she's so cute? <laughs> Doesn't make her our enemy. Can I kill her ass? Of course not. Please stop around. Just be quiet for a moment. Why don't you come with us, Marsh? We should leave before Morse begins showing up anyway. Come on, our camp is over there on the woods. It'll be much safer to talk there. Okay, let's see. And so we begin a new story or rather continue a previous one. Okay, that is smart. <laughs> yeah, continue a previous one. When Marsh rushed in to protect Fujimaru and Artoria, she was snatched away by Morgan's water mirror. After a moment of darkness, she awoke to find herself on an unfamiliar beach, surrounded by blindingly thick fog and crashing of the waves. On the northern horizon, she could see a tree of emptiness, oh, stretching high into the clouds, and as if it were holding up the very sky, the fairies only knew it as the world tree. Though. Whoa, what the hell? So then. So the tree of emptiness was the world tree, like not the world. I'm I'm going. I'm saying like the the fairies here thought that was the world tree, the tree of emptiness. Okay. But what surprised her more than anything was there's no wall here, no sign of the wall of light that used to cover Britain, used to cover all of Britain anywhere. Oh wait, okay. In fact, there was nothing to be seen near Britain at all, nothing but endless plain of white seawater. This was the Isle of Britain in year 400 of the Fey era, approximately 2400 years in the past. Okay, so this is 400. And this is the story of Ash, the Savior's final fateful battle. Oh my god. Okay, I need to need the, read the notes now. Just a minute. Okay, here we go. 4000 Legend of Ash the Savior. Civil wars between clans push Britain to the edge of destruction. One fairy emerges to save Britain, then loses their life. That fairy was Ash the Savior. And here again, in Fairy 2000, the War of Summer, a war between northern fairies led by Queen Ma and the southern fairies. The war ends after Ash the Savior's intervention and the current six clan structures this time. So she has been reincarnated. Like. Yeah, obviously it makes sense because they had like they told us that fairies don't die They just you know, like they just lose their life and they come back again in the future or something like that I can remember they said or you know, like Someone similar to them comes takes their place. All right, um Okay, the war ends after Ash the Savior's intervention and six grand structure is established. Here we go Fey era 400 Mash is sent to this time to the water mirror and we meet Ash again and here, she's again going to like you know breathe her last. I'm guessing. And uh, here in Fey era, like you know, High Queen first year, era of the High Queen first year, Morgan establishes current order of Fey Britain. So in this situation, for Fey era 400, it was it was Ma who was the enemy. However, then something would happen here in this in this time, which we're going to see after following Marshall's story. And then in, in the first year, like we'll get to see Morgan. Yeah, who will establish the. Okay. Yeah. Now, like I was saying, uh, the people who should be with Ash are the Tamlin, the Black Knight, uh, the Grimmer the Sage. These three. So we've me met the Tamlin. I'm guessing Totorot is the Tamlin. Um, Grimmer. I'm guessing Grimmer is also there. I'm not exactly sure. We still haven't seen him, but I, I'm guessing we're going to see him sooner or later. Here's the thing. The Black Knight. I am thinking maybe the Black Knight is actually Marsh. Like, you know, like. Since she has been sent back in time and she's going to spend wait, so if that is the case 
That'd be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Because they explained how they killed the Black Knight. So, what about that then? I don't know. Alright, let's, let's see. Let's, let's read the story. We'll understand little by little. Now, there's a lot of things that I suddenly thought when I saw Habitrot's face over there. At first thing I thought is like, oh, this Habitrot is an imposter or something. <laughs> and this, like, you know, like Habitrot has been sent to, like, this place along with Marsh. But then when ha Habitrot is like, oh, like, look at this girl here. I was like, oh, no, never mind. This is a different Habitrot. So then I was like, oh, so this Habitrot is the one in past. So maybe that is why our Habitrot is so calm about the whole thing. And she's like, oh, Marsh will be fine. You know, because she literally met her before. But turns out she isn't Habitrot, she's Totorot. Which I guess is probably like her past life or past incarnation. So maybe she remembers her past life and that is why Habitrot is so calm and she's like everything will be fine. Marsh is okay. There w no harm would come to her. Something like that. And uh, yeah, you know, like stuff like that, I guess. Alright, you know, oh my god, what the hell? Wales. Alright, are we gonna fight Gawain now? You know what? Let's see. Hmm. Whoa, what? Oh, the bell. Ah, I can still hear the bell ringing. Even though it's been half a day, even though everyone smiled and praised me. Whenever I close my eyes, I can feel the sound like something's grabbing my head from behind. It feels like this ringing may never go away. Hmm. Whoa! Oh my god, I wasn't expecting that. History, another version of me, though one entirely unlike me an imposing fi figure neither mage nor fairy but a child born to a human and dragon artoria and dragon the ideal king who unified the laws of britain protected it from outside invaders and built the towering white castle of camelot she was loved and trusted by all and she shone brighter and more righteous than anyone else with her 12 knights of the round table her many loyal cavalries and her Excalibur, I'm guessing, or, you know, sort of selection, either of it. In hand, she laid the foundation for countless futures. She was truly a great woman. I've never seen her like. I don't want to see her. I don't want to be shown her. I can't handle it. I can't believe it. I can't accept it. After all, I'm the only one of my kind. I have nowhere to run. No one understands me. Romance is out of the question. There's no reward, no finish line, no rest. I can't make so much as a single mistake. Ah, so many things I'll never have. How cruel would I have to be for everyone to accept a king like me with a smile? Hmm. But he's, she's like having dreams of her previous world self. Oh, it's morning. I guess we must have covered a lot of ground overnight. I had the craziest dream. It must be because I rang one of the bells of pilgrimage. Ah, that life is no joke. Hmm. Well, that was nice. While we were rocking back and forth in the carriage, we almost made it back to Londinium overnight. Thank good thing we didn't run into any trouble, huh? I see. So you used the cover of the night to get to Norwich without drawing attention. And for that return trip, we were lucky enough to get a horse-drawn carriage. The Queen might technically prohibit animals from being used for manual labor, but there's no penalty for doing so. Right now, only the clan heads have horse drawn carriages, but who knows? Eventually, every might might start using them. I guess this is how trends get started. <laughs> All that said, I wonder why the Queen banned horse drawn carriages in the first place. Does she love horses? That's part of it, but it's mostly another way to keep fairies in line. If horse drawn carriages became commonplace, fairy horses would stop being born. Ah, I see. That makes sense. Fairies are both cruel and innocent, you know. As soon as something like that becomes popular, we stop seeking out anything else. 
I mean, it's been 2019 years since we started seriously copying human culture, right? The fact that horses like Greta a bit and Percival's dear Kundri are still alive are well and well is proof of Morgan's consideration. Ah, now I see. So there's work involved in maintaining mystics. So Morgan is fine with imitating human society. But she won't allow any cultural Im imitation that would risk eliminating entire swaths of fairy ecology. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense, I guess. Gotta say, that's pretty smart of her. Yeah, exactly. Yes, she's more than just a cruel king out to squeeze her citizens for everything they have. <laughs> Arturo is really feeling down, isn't she? Locks eyes with... Oh. Don't be ridiculous. Morgan's a horrible queen. <laughs> a single tiny kindness does not a good... Does not a good person make. That's just what she wants you to think. Overall, remember, the fairies you all met in my domain, the Welsh woods, is the one place in Britain with autumn leaves. The fairies who fled there are all weak. They all ran away to escape cruel mistreatment. They have nowhere else to go than the whole of Britain. They were persecuted, ostracized, and accused of spreading poison just by existing. You see, they, are all, they all look like insects, so they lost their homes because of Morgan's hatred of bugs and their low intelligence and innocent nature forever prevented them from taking part in fairy Britain's imitation of human society. My words are where fairies like that come together until they inevitably die. Wow. That's right, under the Queen's rule, fairy Britain has no place for the weak, yeah. She only cares about the land itself and not the fairies who live on it. Yep, but just because Morgan thinks they're worthless doesn't mean they actually are. That forest is a home to those who with nowhere else to go. Those who have been forgotten and left to die having never known anything but ire and antipathy. And if it was into the heart of that forest that I was summoned. Hmm. Oh. Of course, Fair Britain doesn't tolerate any interference from proper human history, so I was summoned in a very fragile state. I see. I could hardly move, so all I can do was lie there and sleep. I think if it had been the only I'd been the only one there, I would probably have just disappeared again. I know I said I had a cloak on me when I first came here, but that's actually not true. I had nothing at all. It was a little cold even. But I wasn't at all scared or lonely. Because yeah, the the Welsh fairies. I've never seen this fairy before. He's all alone, poor thing. But he's so handsome, he looks so kind. It's like a prince, a prince. He must be our king. We have a king on our very own now. We have to protect our king. Let's all help our king together. They aren't able to touch me. But they did make a perfect circle around me so they waited excitedly for me to wake up. You know how just knowing someone is cheering for you can give you the strength to go on? There you go. The voices helped me secure my consciousness and eventually stabilize my spirit origin and wake up. You could say one of the reasons I am so overly invested in Britain's welfare is their kindness. Who says they are worthless or incapable of doing anything? They might be powerless but they were the only ones who cared for me. So of course I have to do everything I can to pay them back. That's why I cared so much about taking Morgan down. Really I am a lot like you Fujimaru. I might only be the king of the weak and powerless, but that doesn't mean I'm going to hold anything back. Even if I'm never able to save even one fairy, I'm still going to do whatever I can to build to the best of my ability. Come to think of it, you never did tell us about your summoning, Oberon. No? Hmm, I guess I never did tell you, did I? I was summoned to this land a few months before you and your team showed up. Yeah, I guess we know that, but... It was right around the time Bell first arrived here, okay. Proper human history must have sensed his intervention didn't bode well. Okay. I have a message for you, Captain Calavas, sir. The enemy has already made camp on the north side of Londinium, but you should have no trouble getting in from the south. Wait. Captain... Oh, from Captain Cal. okay. Understood. Thank you, soldier. Then we'll continue bringing the child of prophecy back to Londinium, just as we planned. Tell Calavas to hold his ground for now. It's still too early for an all-out war between our forces. 
Yes, sir. Okay. What was that all about, Percival? Well, just as we expected, the Queen's army has already begun to march on Londin Londinium. She has dispatched Woodwolves and his army are from north, from up at uh, Oxford. That was quick. Can't usually mobilize a whole damn army at the drop of a hat. It's been a day since Artoria rang the bell. The Queen must have already ridden them hard to get them moving so fast. Woodwolves' army is made of entirely of fan clan fairies. Yeah. They don't typically need weapons or bother with them. They can just move quickly when they have to. They're masters on the battlefield, but they're not so great at occupying territory or laying siege. So if that's what who Morgan sent to Londinium, they shouldn't be much of a threat. Yeah, but I don't know. We should be able to wear them down by fortifying our defenses. And taking out Woodwoods would once he inevitably loses his patience and takes the field himself. Can we like really... I don't know. Hmm, what is it, Gareth? Oh, I I'm sorry, it just... You seem so differently. Oh yeah, you know what? That is true. He's, she's way more confident now. Ha, <laughs> did, did I? I? I thought I was just being myself. <laughs> was I more confident or something? As you should be. Remember, you've rung one of the bells of pilgrimage now. Oh wait, I think another thing... Um, maybe... Like... Ash did something to the Braille, Braille of, uh, Bell of Pilgrimage. All the Bells of Pilgrimage, she did something to them so that when Artoria rings them, maybe like the, like, you know, like Ash's power, which has been, I don't know, maybe like put within the bells, they little by little go back to her and she regains her, like, you know, full, full power or something. I don't know. Maybe something like that. Maybe before dying or something, she she did that. She just put her, like, you know, divided up her power or something in all the bells. And then insulted the prophecy of ringing the bell. And now Artoria is ringing the bell. So she's getting all the power back and getting back the confidence and everything. Or it's, I don't know. Remember, you've rung one of the bells of pilgrimage now. Wherever you go, you're going to attract a lot of fairies who are fed up with the queen's regime. So hold your head high, besides you really have gotten stronger, right? Yep, in terms of magical energy, I'd see she's about equal to Morgan's little finger. <laughs> uh, before this, what were we? Equal to Morgan's little finger nail? And now we are probably equal to Morgan's little finger. Oh boy. I had no idea the Bells of Pilgrimage could do that. No wonder the clan heads weren't so quick to give you permission. And we still have five to go, yes. Wait, hang on, there's the Wind Clans in Salisbury, the Wind Clans in Gloucester, Earth Clans in Norwich, and the Fan Clans in Oxford. There's only four bells, what are all the Mirror Clans and King Clans? Hmm, I do wonder. Don't you worry about that. I'm still not sure about the Mirror Clan spell, but I do know about the other one, the King Clan. The fifth bell is at the very edge of Britain, at the root of the World Tree's remnants. Oh. It is in the ruins of Orkney, the now forbidden city at the ends of the world that was destroyed long ago. Oh, she just kept quiet here. Okay, wait a minute. Just a minute. Okay. Something tells me that she... she I, I'm pretty sure Habitat remembers her past life or something. Like, otherwise, the f fact that she's so calm about Marsh suddenly disappearing Kind of makes me think she realized what happened there. And that's why she's like, oh, she's fine. And uh, so something must have happened in this place. Ruins of Orkney, Forbidden City, Ends of the World that was destroyed long ago. Like, we're probably going to go through this in the Marsh section. Later on, maybe when we'll get to see more of Marsh. Maybe we're going to see what happened there or something. Because Habitat seemed like she, she knew about something. Okay. Oh wait, I didn't read that. Okay, hold up. I know the bells are important, but right now we need to focus on Londinium. Woodwards' army is practically on your doorstep now, right Persito? Are you sure it's safe for us to go back? Yes, and I also think we should just do that. Artoria is right, the fan clan is poorly suited for siege warfare. If all we need to do is defend Londinium's walls, we can hold up for 10 days even with the forces we have. That should give us plenty of time to come up with a plan. Woodwards' army is... 
curved up on the plains about 2 kilometers north of Lond Londinium. They don't have the numbers to properly encircle us. Woodworth's only hope for victory will be to break through our main gate and take over our city from the inside. Which is why we're going to chip away at his force by staring him down. Right, the greatest advantage we have is our ability to retreat to a stronghold whenever we need to, even as we are headed back to Londinia. I'm having the troops we sent out help out to help free Norwich split up into two squadrons and move out of Londinium's east and west sides. Part of their job is to deter Woodwolves from launching an all-out assault, since doing so would leave his forces vulnerable to an attack from behind. But if those squadrons get the chance, they'll also attack Woodwolves' isolated troops, thereby reducing their overall numbers. We may not be able to beat them in straight fight, but in a siege like this, we're pretty evenly matched. Okay. So we'll just have to slowly tip the battle in our favor as it drags on. Fortunately, we also have the Count in Norwich helping us now, so we should be good on supplies. Okay, but when London Londinia might not be completely encircled, it's still mostly surrounded, right? Is there some secret entrance or underground path inside of something? No, I'm afraid Londinium has nothing like that. Or at least, if it does, we weren't able to find it yet. Then does that mean we're about to... Yeah. That's right, we're going to look for a weak spot in the wood versus line and charge right through. <laughs> Uh, good. That is, this is great. It'll be perfect opportunity to see what our new and improved Artoria can do. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right. So obviously, uh, Woodwoos is here. So I'm guessing Gawain won't be here because they were talking about how to send them somewhere else. So yeah. Okay. You know what? Let's see. Uh. Oh, I... Okay. So, Artori has already been given to me over there. Alright. Oh, who should I choose? Yes. <clears throat> and let's choose the characters that I want my bond to increase. Her. Can I do this? I don't know. Let's see. I think I should be able to do this. Yeah, there we go. Alright. Double Skadi. Hmm. I should have brought Morgan here. Okay. <laughs> Hmm. 
What the hell? The birds are not hidden. Uh, I should, it would have been so easier if I just brought Morgan in the in the in the front line. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, now I'm gonna use the Noble Phantasm. God damn it. Oh my god. Yeah, good god. You know what? Screw this. Okay, wait a minute. NP seal and. Oh, yeah, because I have the, the triple quick up. <laughs> oh my god. Right, so this. Yeah, this is the Hmm. What is this? This is like oh god. Yeah, I I thought we we're gonna fight a single target character or something. Like with a big one. This is like, this is like a full okay. Morgan would have been so much more better here. I don't even have the switching thing. <sighs> Alright. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh 
my god, when will this end? Oh god! Ah! God damn it. <laughs> Why did I do this? Like, I could have easily, just like I usually do, take Morgan in. I, I just thought, why not use balance it? And now I'm struggling to do this for freaking... Ugh. I could have easily, just like I usually do, bring Morgan and double Castoria. I just one Castoria in this case. I could have easily done that, but no. I, I was like, yeah, let me use Bhavan Sith. And there you go. Now, I had to do this for 16 turns. Good God. <laughs> oh my god okay uh, damn it it's no use we can't stop them on our own it's not just Percival either all the human soldiers are moving weirdly fast is that the child of prophecy do doing this it's just like what High Queen Morgan does we did it we punched through the defenses ever make for Londinium we're out here as soon as the east gate is open. I'll bring up the rear. Don't worry, nobody's getting past me. Fujimaru, I want you to stay with the child of prophecy. Alright, will do. That's what I like to hear. See you in Londinium. Okay. It took a few small skirmishes to get here, but we made it back unscathed. I'd say we won the battle today. Great work, everyone. You too, Percival. I gotta say, they still have the advantage of numbers, and the longer the battle drags on, the more likely they are to get reinforcements from Camelot. We can't just lurk out in our hidey hole forever. We ha need to be looking for chances to take the fight to them. That can wait until we have more soldiers of our own to work with, like the ones the Count is sending along with the soul supplies. By this time tomorrow, we should have a good number of rebels from Norwich here to help us. That's when we'll strike at Woodwoose's headquarters. We can settle this once and for all while our enemy guard is still down. Yes, that's the idea. Which is all the more reason for us to rest and recuperate now. Go ahead and turn in for the night if you like, everyone. Our soldiers will stand watch. Okay. Oh, is this Woodwoose's place? Yep. Woodwoose's army camp. Say that again, Perilgut? I didn't think I heard you right. Did you really just forbid me from going into battle? You want me to refrain from attacking Londinium directly? High Queen Morgan would never say anything like that. Don't you lie to me, you filthy human. You think just because the High Queen's taken a liking to you, you can dishonor me and my army? Whoa, 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 easy there, Woodwoods. I'm not so big on this plan either, okay? If you ask me, this is a great opportunity to demolish that castle while we have the rebels in one place. I mean, this is obviously a terrible move, right? I can't blame you for having issues with it. So, how about this, buddy? Why don't you tell me what you really think of the High Queen? I'd be more happy to pass it along to her when I get back to Camelot. Oh, I think that's a great idea. I'd love to hear Mother's reaction to that. Go on, Furball, bug for us. If you've got something to say to Mother, let's hear it. Hey, is it true Aurora played you like a fiddle in your room? Restaurant while crap was going down in Norwich? Oh my god. No wonder mother's so sick of you. Can't blame her for forbidding you to fight until you shape up. You know you're the one who ever made her cross like that. Who knows what you'll get up without some oversight. Don't you talk to me like that, you little... Lord Woodwoods, you have every right to be upset, but please try to control yourself. <sighs> I know. I'm well aware. I won't repeat Borgard's mistake. If that is the High Queen's command, I am, of course, happy to comply. 
The Fang Clan will always be High Queen Morgan's loyal retainers. We're nothing like the Earth Clan, always dancing to Spriggan's tune. Very well then, if they want to hide in their castle, I can play along a while. I'm delighted that Her Majesty has entrusted me with eradicating both the Child of Prophecy and the Round Table Army. Of course, I have no objections. But that being said, should the Round Table Army attack us, all bets are off. I trust you understand that. If that happens, we will have to meet them in the field. You bet, buddy. Believe me, that's what I prefer to. But I can't lend Tristan you Tristan, okay? She's my personal bodyguard. If things get start getting serious, I'm counting on you guys to massacre the Round Table Army by yourself. But hey, you can pull that off, right? You might be getting old, but you are still the head of the Fang Clan. Oh wow, don't be ridiculous. I don't ever need to go after them myself. My elite soldiers will be more than enough. Neither the Child of Prophecy nor the Foreign Mage pose any real threat. The only problem is that cheeky brat Percival, who managed to put up a good fight against Lancelot. And still, <laughs> this is a battle, not a duel. Even if he happened to be the last one standing, what's good it would to do to him? If we kill everyone else inside the castle, I'm sure he'll simply surrender. <laughs> Beryl's, Beryl's face. Wow, that was just pathetic. When did Woodwards become such a wuss? It's like he doesn't even want to fight himself. Maybe that's why mother forbade him from going into battle, because he would actually die if he did? I'll say, that was ridiculous. I haven't had the shakes that bad since Marisbury recruited me from Kaldia. <laughs> there's, going, there's going soft in your old age and then there's this. Come the hell on, Woodwoos. Hey, we did what mother asked you to, right? Let's just get out of here. I know, why don't we stop by Gloucester? Oh my god, why? is great, I bet it beats anything you had in your world too. We can go to the Count's restaurant together and after that we can try... Oh, right, robbing a... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why? What? Okay, but what, this is just... Uh, um, maybe some other time, when I've got nothing better to do. What, so you're busy now? I'm not, I'm bored out of my skull. Well, it's just that something's nagging at me about Morgan's orders. Do not let Woodwoods fight. Huh, you know, depending on how you look at it, that could mean the exact opposite. Huh, opposite, how? Oh, maybe Morgan wants to... wants like an official reason to... Like, bring Woodwoos and the Child of Prophecy down at the same time? Two birds, one stone? Hmm, let's stick around for just a little longer, ladies, you know? If everything works out like I think it might, we should be in for a pretty spectacular show. Hmm, okay. Alright, and I'm going to end it here. Okay. All right, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to end it here. And uh, wow, it's a big section. All right, so that is it, guys. That is my gameplay for Law Spell Six. And uh, wait, this is section thirteen. Okay, so quite a few things happened in this video. First of all, that whole part with Marsh. You know, like we can kind of understand what's going on now, where Marsh is now currently, where Marsh is, where Marsh is currently. And uh, like I said, I get the feeling that Marsh is the Black Knight. I might be wrong completely, but this is just a guess because it would kind of make sense because you know, Marsh is kind of wearing like a black armor and uh, it would make sense if she's called the Black Knight because of that. And uh, the fact that she is currently in year 400 would mean that she, as, as they say, like she'll be spending the final, like, you know, like, small amount of time, the final amount of time with uh, with uh, Ash and his and, and her and her party members. So as we know, as we have heard in one of the previous sections, they kind of explained the final party members that Ash had were Ash, Grimmer, um, a Tamlin and the Black Knight. So we know who the Tamlin is, it's Totorot. I'm pretty sure Grimmer is there somewhere. And uh, Ash is there, so the only one who's missing is the Black Knight. So, unless and until, like, the next section will probably give us more explanation 
But now I'm just guessing Marsh is the Black Knight. But I might be wrong. I will understand if I'm correct or wrong when I'm going to watch or when they're going to bring in the next section of the story for Marsh. Because one thing is going to prove if I'm correct or wrong. If there is a person called Black Knight over there in Ash's party, then I would realize that yes, I was wrong. You know, like Marsh isn't the Black Knight, it's someone else. But if there's no one called the Black Knight in Ash's party, then it would it automatically make sense that Marsh is actually the Black Knight. Um, so yeah, that is why I'm not a hundred percent sure. But this is just like a speculation that maybe Marsh is the Black Knight, and uh, yeah, like you know, like we'll see. And and maybe that is also the reason why Habitrot is actually so confident that Marsh is fine because maybe she remembers her past life or something. So there you go. Uh, that is it guys, uh, thank you for watching, this was my gameplay for Lost Pearl 6, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel, or you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, I'll check them out. And so yeah, that is it, thank you for watching and I will see you guys uh, tomorrow with another video on Lost Pearl 6. So until then goodbye and have a nice day.